Hey everyone, welcome to the party. <laughs> We're going to do a garden party soap today and you will see a majority of the instructions or at least everything I'm using in the text at uh, the top of the video or well it kind of moves around a little so you can see what's going on but um, follow along with that and I will interject when I need to because there are Probably some nuances here that I did not get to put in the text because it's a little bit of a complicated soap. Um, mostly the complication is when we put it together. None of the individual parts are really difficult. But um, I will be telling you also a little bit about the inspiration for this soap and, and how it came to be. But first I'd like to introduce to my... Ah, I can talk. Introduce my co-host, Mr. Soaps and Such. Hello, how are you? Top of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Is that enthusiastic enough? <laughs> I didn't tell you to be enthusiastic, but it's mm. nice to see that you are. <laughs> okay. Maybe we can do it this time without the solicitors knocking on the door. Oh, that would be nice, yeah. Yeah, we had part of this done, and then we hear a big knock, 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 like anybody needs to knock on our door at 5.50 p.m. I mean, come on, people. I tell you. <laughs> Just don't knock. <laughs> if you know me, email me. <laughs> you don't need to knock on my door. Um, you can see how I feel about <laughs> strangers knocking on my door. Um, okay, so a little bit about this soap and, and how it came to be. Mr. Soaps and Such, do you recall when um, I made the chiffon, uh, well, I did the chiffon rainbow first. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember those. With those sheets. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was good. That was a fun one. Um, and a really cool technique. And then I did the chiffon bonfire. You remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember the, the ones with the sheets. Mm -hmm. They were good. And you remember how upset I was once we cut the chiffon bonfire that because it we wanted it to look like a fire that was a whole idea and i wanted to use neons and i used a tennis ball breaker um from mad micas as the yellow but i specifically added something uh a little bit of a yellow mic i can't even remember which one it was maybe yellow raincoat i don't know yeah i do and because i wanted it to to yellow up a little bit more because tennis ball breaker can look a little green yeah and then I added a little titanium dioxide, too, to make sure it was uh, opaque enough. And apparently I didn't add enough because when we cut it open, the yellow, when it, at, the, at the places in the soap where it was in the black soap, which was most of it because that was the base I used, and really it was only the little tops that were sticking out that weren't in the... We had little tops sticking out that kind of looked like flames was the idea. Um... But because the black soap around was so kind of intense, it made that yellow look green. And to me, that just was weird. It's a fire soap and green flames are weird. Um, doesn't mean they don't exist, but in a campfire, that's not a normal thing. So I freaked out a little bit. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> it's like, yes, you freak out at every soap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But so I posted it in all the soap groups and I just asked, I think I just asked you what you thought it looked like because I wanted to see if it gave the bonfire image with that green in there. And most of you did, did say it looked like a fire. There were a lot, there were some other neat descriptions and I just wanted you to kind of guess. And, um, a few people so I'm going to say several, not the majority, but several people saw, um, sprouts coming up out of the dirt and little flowers at the top and flowers sprouting like in spring kind of a thing. And what the minute, the minute you said it, I saw it, it definitely had that look and could have been kind of, uh, sold as that, except it was fragranced with, um, you know, campfire. <laughs> so that would have been a little weird to sell flowers as campfire. So I did, mention in my communications with some of you that I thought that was a really cool idea to do that same design and technique but as sprouts intentionally 
Mm-hmm. And so I had that in the back of my mind for spring and I was kind of, you know, I wasn't jumping at it. And then, <laughs> uh, Mad Micah's, um, who as you, you just saw, I am affiliated with, but they did not affiliate is not the same thing as a sponsorship. Just so you know, they're not paying me to do anything. I don't get free Micah's. I'm not paid. I, um, but I do, uh, love their stuff. I love their colors and, um, that's what I use. So they happened to start something at the beginning of this year where they're creating these really neat color blends and they're, they're just really unique and it, they all seem to be so far, they all seem to be like a mica blended with a pigment and seems to be like a neon pigment because that bright, we had that bubblegum pink first and then we had marigolds and then we got one called garden party. And in my head, when I read that, that it was going to be called garden party and saw the really bright green that you see in that little, um, rectangle mold on the screen right now. When I saw that, I immediately had the image of the soap that I wanted to make using, um, the chiffon technique, the one that kind of, kind of was in the chiffon bonfire, but not really. And I had a really clear picture of what I wanted to do with it. And, um, anyway, so that's what I'm making. Um, I, uh, right now you see me mushing up anytime you use a pigment, you really have to mush the lumps out. They're tiny little lumps, but if you look in the bottom, it looks almost gritty when you're mixing it, if you're mixing it with alcohol or with anything else. Um, if you're blending it directly into soap, I don't recommend that. You can get away with that with micas, but not really with pigments as much. Um, but, uh, if, if you mush them around, they'll, they'll dissolve. You just have to spend more time mushing. And I do have a way I'm going to try, um, that I've seen one of the cold process soapers do, um, that is, looks like a more efficient and really cool way to mush those lumps out. But I, I still have to purchase a tool and I haven't done that yet. So eventually you'll see a video on that because it's a really, I think it's a really cool way to get all of the lumps out. Anyway, I got the majority out there. Um, the big mistake, not big, the minor mistake I made, and this is just, I think I mentioned it up here. Um, don't add your alcohol too soon. Don't mix up all your colors at once. If you're using alcohol, if you're using glycerin, which some people do, you absolutely could go ahead and mix them all up ahead of time. If you're using fragrance oil, same thing. Um, but anyway, I, so I end up, you'll see me going back and adding more alcohol because it just dries up. It just, you know, the colors suck it up, especially if they ha are pigmented colors. I mean, um, if they have a pigment or they're blend, a blend of mica and pigment, um, they tend to be a little more absorb, absorbing, absorbative. I don't know. Absorbent. Absorbent. I Absorbent. knew there was a real word for it. I, I, it's much more fun to make up words, but yeah, I knew there was a real word out there. Absorbenizer. <laughs> Absorbenization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, you'll see me doing one layer at a time. I've got a lot going on here. So I, you, the order isn't super important as far as when you make the various embeds. Um, for me, I'm having to film it. So I kind of, it needs to, I got to save time. I don't want to be filming for three hours and try to edit that. Um, so I try to, one thing is setting up and I'm doing something else and whatever. Um, you'll see, you basically need sheets of soap, which we're about to make. And this is, um, in a second, um, in here, right there's little thin sheets in the rectangles. That's a different purpose and that's not full. That's about maybe one sixteenth to one eighth of an inch thick. Very, very, very thin layers. But here we're pouring out on a mat. This mat is a silicone mat and it's brilliant to do this kind of work on. It is so much fun and, uh, and really easy to, to kind of work from if you're doing some free, free form, freestyle kind of stuff. So this is, we're kicking it up a notch a little bit with these because we're putting two colors in at once. The green's in the middle because that's going to represent 
your stems or your roots kind of a look. You can do whatever you want with it. For the look I was going for, I wanted the green to be represented at the bottom. And uh, I mean, really would have liked a little more green um, with these, but the way it turned out, because when I was looking at that, I was worried. I was like, that green's not going to show up. But it shows up enough, and where it doesn't show up, it still looks really cool. Um, I wasn't, there was nothing in the soap when I cut it at the end that I was, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. I, I loved it. This is one of the soaps, one of the few soaps that when it was done right away, I I was like, that's my vision. That's exactly what I wanted it to be. You know how well, I mean, how bad I am at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. So anyway, we're making we're making thin sheets of soap, and at the same time, I am pouring off a little bit to the side. Um, that's going to be used later to cut out some little flowers using fondant cutters. That's why I'm doing it with the colors that I want flowers. You can use whatever colors you want for your flowers. Um, you know, you could have whatever you could have gone purples and blues and pinks, and I just I wanted the neon look because part part of it was I was wanting to use the um, the other colors that Mad Micah came out with because I think they looked really cool with cool with them, to cool together. They didn't have a yellow yet, be, um, which is why I didn't end up doing my own blend. But the bubblegum pink is what you see. That was the first one they released, and I will be using marigolds in just a minute as well. Um, and I thought the yellow would kind of tie them all together really nicely. They look, they're gorgeous together. Anyway, so those are your flower colors. And these are the soap sheets that we're making. And with the other things that we'll be making are the little thin rectangles for cutting out the, um, for cutting out the flowers. And then you'll see there's one green solid um, rectangle in there. That's going to be shredded later for grass. It's going to become the grass. You don't get to see me shred the grass on the video because of the camera cut out we lost a little bit of footage here and there so i think we lost about my fault. two yeah no, no <laughs> big no big whoop um the td is important you're not really lightening the color very much you're just kind of making it a little bit more opaque so that the black doesn't affect the color that much if you um you don't want to you don't want them see through um in this kind of a design, I'm, you know, I'm huge on clarity and things being clear and see through. I love that. That's like my favorite effect with glycerin soap. But for this soap, it's, it needs to be opaque for the most part. I do end up doing something a little bit different in the end as I'm putting it together. I'm, and I unintentionally made uh, a gradient with the um, color I end up with for the dirt and it kind of gets a little clearer and clearer as it goes to the top, which I think worked in my favor, but I wasn't doing it on purpose. I was just in too much of a hurry to get some soap melted because it was going to seize up on me and I didn't want, um, I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want it to end up being layers that I had to stick together. I wanted it to stay liquid and get, get each layer on or get not layer on, but get the rest of the embeds added before it set up. So, and the other reason I didn't add more colors to make up for that is I didn't think I could match it very well because it was a combo of a bunch of weird things. So, um, I love, and there's, again, there's what I lost there, that heliotrope with the bubblegum pink. If you remember when I used the bubblegum pink, I only used half of the, because I poured a full cup and I used half of it. And then I came back and I added heliotrope, which made it a gorgeous color. I don't, uh, magenta, I guess maybe you'd call that. I don't know. It's pretty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, the last one I did, cause I like to use five of the sheets when I'm doing those soaps. It just, it's an, uh, it works well to me with the rainbow or with any of them. Five is the magic number. Is this for the me. fifth one? Yeah, this is the fifth one. And Excuse as me. you see, I only used one color for that. And that's because I kind of wanted to highlight that green with the garden party. Um, I mm -hmm. wanted and, you know, and tie it in with the grass. I wanted a little bit more of the green to be there. I could have added, and if you want to, I could have done purple, bright neon purple or something on the sides or, um, you know, whatever color you want, peach, anything. Um, 
any color you would want in flowers. Oh gosh. Yeah. Guys, I don't know where these elbow dances are coming from. <laughs> None of these are, I don't know if you saw the last one I did, but which was the first one. I'm sure there'll be more because now that I see them, I can't unsee them. I don't know what I'm doing. It's like I, I don't know. Oh, we are having all Boy. kinds of excitement today. So I hope you probably heard that nice big honking. I don't know what is going on in our neighborhood today, but apparently somebody's now honking. But it's not a normal honk. It's not like somebody's car. This is like a... I don't know what it was. I don't know. It sounds like a fire truck or something. don't even live on a major street. So. <laughs> it's very weird. Life and times in Florida. <laughs> um, okay, so back to this. I was oh. trying to think of a uh, of a spoof version of uh, that Just a Small Town Girl, but I just couldn't oh, get it. yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Spoofs on the spot aren't... We can't sing anyway, so... We're not going to sing on here and get, get copyright striked. Well, it would have been spoof words. We wouldn't have been. Oh, that's true. Okay, so I want to backtrack a little bit because just because um, you see the little pile of powders I had there, Rasul Clay and the pumice, you can add whatever exfoliants you prefer. And I even had, I had some poppy seeds out. I had some apricot seed powder. I did plan to add apricot seed powder, actually, and I just, I forgot. So it just didn't end up in the final thing because I literally forgot to put it in there. Hmm. Um, and the poppy seeds, I didn't forget. I just, I thought they'd be too much within the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want them to either float or sink because they're one of those that the temperature has to be perfect for. And um, so I ended up sprinkling those on top, which looks really super cool. Um, and I want to also head back to, as we were just like so rudely interrupted with the honking, <laughs> mm. I... um. The other thing that was going on while on screen, um, I had those powders out there for the dirt soap, the dirt part of it, is um, I was, I'm gathering some scraps and I am going to be remelting them. When you're making dirt soap, I mean, it can be whatever color you see the soil as in your general area or whatever. I went for a really, really dark brown, almost black, and that's kind of what that's what it ended up being. Um, but in a dark soap like that, you can have scraps of soap that have mica and colorants in there because it, it's going to be covered up for the most part. It might influence it a little bit, but don't be afraid to melt your scraps into something that's going to be brown or black because you see that that's a lot of intense color in there. There's a lot of mica going on in those scraps. I did add a few clear cubes that I also had sitting out. So a slurry is kind of a paste. This is questionably a slurry. It's a little thinner than most, but um, just gives you room to mush the lumps out of everything, um, which is really important in, in adding things like clays um, and pumice. The pumice does a pretty good job of mixing in pretty quickly. And there goes the activated charcoal. Now it's almost black. It even looks black sometimes in certain lights, the soap does, um, but it's really a dark, dark brown. Um, the, and I'm just kind of adding soap to it and thinning it out once the lumps are mushed. Then I'm going to add it to the clear. Please have extra ready with a design like this if you're not exactly sure. Because you know you know how much soap your mold holds. But what you might not think about is you've also used soap that's going to be sticking up out of it. So, you know, that's that's part of the ounces that you've measured out and now you don't have enough to fill the mold at least that's what I did I didn't take that into consideration so and it wouldn't even if I did it would be almost impossible to measure that way it'd, it'd be a real guess and so have cubes ready to melt and that's kind of how I got the gradient anyway so I kind of liked it it worked out neat that at the top I put it all in the same picture here so it uh, it took in a little bit of the mud color and got a little clearer each time I added, which I think I only added two times. But anyway, here's the pour. This is the hardest part because you got to move like lightning once this hits. It's why you grate all your soaps ahead of time. By the way, to mention back to the weird little clay soap you saw me grating up, you can grate up whatever color soap you want. It can be clay. It doesn't have to be. I used clay because, again, this is supposed to be a, uh, a gardener soap so clay is really helpful in cleaning um, 
things really well. It's mildly, very mildly, but mildly exfoliating as well. So there is that. And that's why I used a clay soap that I had. Just had an extra sitting there. Wrapped up, I unwrapped it and grated part of it. And the rest of it's in my bath and I'm using it now. And I love it. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to talk fast because this part's going so fast. This is the hardest thing. You got to keep it moving or that soap. Once you start putting a lot of embeds in, your soap is going to cool really quickly. So that is, um, it's a plus when you don't have a lot of time to wait around for your soap to set up because it is going to set up more quickly than if you just had a, a straight on pour of a whole loaf all at once. Um, but those embeds drop the temperature crazy quick. Um, so that's why you see me scrambling there. And I added, I only added four cubes of soap. I knew I'd need more, but I needed it now. So I needed to melt it quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's why I just threw that in the microwave. I probably, that's one of the moments I was like, I should have called Mr. Soaps and such out here to help me melt. Yeah. <laughs> just throw yeah. soap at him. Should have, could have, would have. <laughs> oh, yeah, no kidding. No kidding. So, and it, the color on its own, you're looking, the bucket looks really gross. But when you, I mean, to me, <laughs> once you put it in, it, it does, it looks like dirt, which is what it's supposed to. And I feel like the, um, the embeds of the, sh the shredded embeds, I can't even tell you specifically what the clay or the lighter neutral color is supposed to be. I'm going to say like either little pebbles, little bits of leaves, little things and bits that are in the soil. Somebody who gardens might be able to come up with it better than me but it's just the image I had with these and I know that when you start digging into the dirt it's not all typically it's not all just black or brown there's going to be little bits of stuff um so that's what you see with that and then the grass and um I thought I wasn't going to have enough but actually it turned out to be perfect so um I scramble for every little bit because I, what I didn't want to happen with this is for them to all be covered up with soap. I wanted some sticking out a little bit. And so that's where I felt like I wasn't going to quite have enough, but it did. It worked out exactly. I, you only need a little bit coming out because you also have the little flower bits and coming out. Um, and, and then you put the, the actual flowers in there that I, that was a last minute addition, by the way, I wasn't planning that in originally in my idea of it, but I thought it would look really cute and give a little more of an element of making sure you see, oh, this is flowers. Oh, it's a garden. So, um, those, I came up with that idea as, as I was starting this soap, as I was doing the chiffon sheets, the soap sheets. So, um, yeah, there's the last bits of glitter. I'm not glitter. <laughs> I was going to talk about glitter. Last bits of, of grass. And why was I going to talk about glitter? Because this is the point where you're wrapping it up and I'm like, Ooh, this could use a little glitter on top that cause you know, <laughs> you know me, am I always heading for the glitter? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> always. So I started, I actually left the room for a second and it was to go get glitter. And then on the table, I had already gotten out the poppy seeds because I thought I might add them in there. And I, and, uh, I decided no on the glitter because it was a garden. And I mean, you could, it could be dew, it could be whatever. Um, but I, when I saw the poppy seeds, I was like, no, that's even better. Little organic poppy seeds in the garden. It just looked, I don't know. It looked more garden-like <laughs> than glitter. But that was a, that's a real switch up for me because normally this would have been sparkly. Um, the little flowers, I recommend, I it didn't all get the footage there, but I recommend kind of putting them like back to front standing up. You can lay them on top if you want that image to come up. But I think with the, um, the little soap sheets, it makes it more complicated for that. So I just wanted them to, as you cut the soap, um vertically that you can see that it's an image of a flower in there and of course I was shoving them in last minute and this the soap was setting up so I was panicking with that so they all didn't make it straight up and down and exactly every place I wanted them to be every you know color combo but um that's why I went back and you'll see in a minute what I'm about to do I'll go back and add just a couple little touches of another flower on the front um, and I think it really ties the whole thing together. 
That little trick there, by the way, if you haven't tried that, spritzing it with alcohol, the mold as you're unmolding, oh, makes it so much easier. I think you mean vinaigrette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we decided as we were getting ready to cut this mm -hmm. thing that it was definitely a salad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Garden salad party. Garden salad party. And then, I mean, once you see the flowers, it's not as much, but it does. It looked like a salad. I was like, that's the prettiest salad I've ever seen. <laughs> Are those gluten-free croutons? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Why, thank you. No gluten in my soaps. Um, not in these anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any gluten in others, but. Okay. Now, I didn't get this written up there, but this is important. If you're using seeds or large particles of anything on top of your soap, you want to put your soap on its side to cut. Um, and it did happen to work out even though this soap is insanely tall because of all the stuff sticking out. It still fit in the Uncle Andy's and um, was able to cut it sideways. Otherwise, those poppy seeds are going to drag all the way down through the soap and leave these great big scratches in the fronts and backs of your soap. So I'm glad I remembered to do that, first of all. <laughs> and I'm glad the soap fit in the Uncle Andy's. It's got quite a nice wide uh, girth there for, for getting your soap through the little tunnel and getting to the guillotine. Um, that looks and, amazing. Didn't it look cool? I, I was thrilled. I can't. I can tell you because you know. I don't even have to tell you. I was I was ecstatic over this one. She was. It was rare. It was good. It was, <laughs> it was good. a rare moment. <laughs> yes. It was. Yeah, y'all. That's all I could think of to say. Y'all. <laughs> Look at this. Um, yeah, exciting. Um, so I would love for you to tell me what color you would make if you're making... Um, a garden party soap, what would you choose for your flowers? Um, you could do a, an entirely different design with with different flower embeds you could create from little molds or whatever. I just thought I was trying to go easy because I knew the rest of the soap was going to be just tedious <laughs> and I didn't want to I didn't want to have to pour in a little bitty molds over and over and over to create a bunch. I thought, oh, let's just get out the cutters. It was much easier. And it, as it turned out, I think it actually was better for this design for me anyway. And here goes our last cut. Uncle Andy's did the job beautifully. I'm not paid by him. I'm not sponsored, affiliated, nothing. I just love the cutter. You have to be extremely careful. Um, that thing is sharp. Do not cool. get your fingers near cool. it. Cool, cool. <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> so I here's where I, I'm adding the last touches there. And I don't do it for the pictures because they kind of stick pretty good for the short term. <laughs> Just stick them on there like it's a sticker. And it holds pretty well um, for these. And But after the camera turns off, I do glue them down. Um, I'm not with glue, but with clear soap that's... Um, you know, a fairly hot temperature and you just put a drop and mush your flour in there. And if any leaks out the sides, you can either wipe it with a little, um, with a little lint-free cloth or something, or you can scrape it away with a knife after it sets up, um, whatever you prefer if, if it's a lot, but it's clear. So it doesn't show that much. And that's not an imperative thing to do. Um, for using a soap like this, let me give you a quick quick little tip because, yeah, they're hard to wrap. You can wrap them. I'll probably curl some of the tops over a little bit to make them easier to wrap, depending. Um, but when you use it, if you just kind of mush those tops down a little bit, I because I used a chiffon bonfire soap, which had really tall flames like that, and it, it worked beautifully. Like it just kind of stuck to the top of the soap, and it just wore away just like any other soap. And um, I might have had one little tiny piece break off, but in the beginning, not much. So, um, you know, do this at your own risk. <laughs> but um, I'd love to see if you do make a soap like this, please tag me and um, let me know. And uh, I'd love to see your interpretation of it. This, um, this was one of my favorite soaps, I think. I'm... Um, but I'd, I'd love to see you all using my chiffon technique 
in whatever way you can, in whatever way you think of. You all are super creative, so I know you can come up with different designs and ways to use this look. Um, I've got some other things in mind for this technique that are kind of similar that I'll be doing down the road, but um, this was the most important one for me to get done now because, you know, springtime is not here much longer. It already feels like summer here in Florida, doesn't it? Yes, it does, Miss Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mr. Soaps and such. <laughs> he didn't have much to talk about this time. Oh, I love these. Oh, this is really good. Thanks. Yeah, they were really, really cool. The other soap we made on Sunday, because we do Saturday-Sunday filming, and the ones we did on, did we do two on Sunday or one? We did one. We did this one on Saturday, I think, yeah. and we did the other on Sunday. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking yeah. about that one. That was pretty cool. Remember? That was fun. I do This remember. is unbelievable. It's like, look at that. This one was, even though, I, like, I, it, it involved. Like it's got vinaigrette on it. On top. <laughs> look at that right there. Vinaigrette. More vinaigrette, please. <laughs> It's not a salad. It's a, a garden. It's a garden. It's a garden. Look at it that. Look, look at the like dirt. A You're right. It's a look garden. Look at the dirt and look at the little sprouts in the grass. I'm loving it. Well, if you have lasted this long, I am impressed and I thank you. <laughs> I hope you try this soap. I hope you take your mom to tea on Mother's Day in a garden. And I hope she has fun with it. And I hope you make her a garden soap, a garden party soap, because I don't know, there's nothing more spring-like to me than a garden party soap. What do you think, Mr. Soaps and such? I've never heard you say that in nine years. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks so much for being here. Thanks. Bye. Bye.